Hello and welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Yorgos Lisandridis from the Common Knowledge and Data Management Center in the European Commission, DG Research and Innovation. And I would welcome you all to a very special session on uh, the European Commission Horizon Results Platform and how we can help you valorize your funded research results. This uh, session is uh, specifically targeted for the European Research uh, Council um, researchers. And we would like to. Um, uh, next slide, please. To share a few uh, elements about how we can help you um, promote and uh, make your results more visible. Um, we are targeting specifically you the audience uh, that with the hard work of our colleagues from the ERC um, discovered you because you have actually went the extra mile and created uh, your own companies, your own startups, uh, start coming out from your uh, results and your research. Um, and uh, to do this, I would first like to welcome some uh, keynote speakers. First, I would like to welcome Stefan Endong, my head of unit uh, here at the Common Data and Knowledge Management Center. Stefan, over to you. Yes, thanks a lot, Yorgo. Uh, so good, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining us this afternoon. I will be very short. I'm Stefan Dong, and I'm responsible in the DG Research and Innovation for dissemination and exploitation of the results which are coming out of uh, the, the, the research and innovation we are funding. Um, and we are very happy today to talk to you, uh, ERC grantees and principal investigators. I mean, we all know that ERC is attracting some of the best scientists and funding some of the best science throughout Europe and beyond uh, Europe's border. And we know also that um, ERC is not designed to fund um, uh, close to market innovation a priori. But we see that many interesting things are coming out of uh, the European Research Council funded research. Um, and some of them are supported by the proof of concept. That's the case uh, of uh, some or most of you maybe. Um, but we also know that the path from research to market is not an easy one. I mean, how to handle uh, um, uh, IPR, how to present yourself to investors, how to prepare for pitching events, how to find partners that can help you develop your ideas and your projects. This is all uh, uh, quite difficult when you're not experienced in that domain. And that's the reason why we come in and we try to support your efforts, your projects and your visibility uh, through the Horizon Result Platform and through the, the service that comes with it. Um, you will see later on in this, uh, in this presentation some of your peers uh, coming out of the European Research Council that have gone this path from research to creating companies to uh, uh, delivering new product, new services, and sometimes very successfully. And we hope that a lot of you uh, will follow on uh, uh, in that path. Um, and without further ado, I will uh, I will give the floor to uh, to Laura, my colleagues from the European Research Council Executive Agency. Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, yes, good afternoon. My name is Laura Conticia from the um, agency uh, dealing of the uh, ERC Research Council. Uh, so yes, as Stefan said, uh, you all know that uh, the ERC is funding frontier research, blue sky research, curiosity driven research. So we don't attach any string to the research uh, that uh, the, the ERC is funding. And we don't expect uh, any results if not uh, pushing ahead the frontier of knowledge. And how do we measure the impact of this? Uh, by mainly through uh, publications uh, coming out of your research in journals uh, who have a particular uh, great impact uh, who, and the citation of these articles in science, in research by, by other researchers at the same level. But uh, at the same time, the Scientific Council is also looking into other aspects of the impact that the research funded by the Scientific Council can have. And uh, one of these uh, impacts is uh, what uh, we have called impact beyond science, so uh, beyond what we can measure through publications. And uh, we have looked at different ways of measuring that. And one of these is uh, to see how many of the ERC-funded researchers are creating 
uh, startups, for example, and this is done obviously in a completely again bottom up way, which is the philosophy of the ERC. Nobody asks these researchers to create startups. This is a result of their of their own research or their own path towards possibly uh, application of the results of their research. And uh, through uh, surveys that many of you have uh, received, I mean, at least all the ERC grantees have received it, and through other analysis made internally, we have now created a, a, a database of 400 startups, which were somehow created or co-created by ERC grantees. And these are those who have been invited uh, to this um, webinar today to receive uh, information on how they can be helped to get further in their uh, in their path towards the market, which is a difficult one, as we well know. Uh, the results of um, some of the uh, startups created by ERC grantees are visible also uh, in the fact that they have been very successful when applying to the transition um, uh, call, transition funding by the European Innovation Council. And in general, the um, positive uh, in results of ERC funded research can be found also in, uh, in, in the fact, this is something that we see through another study, that uh, the results of the research uh, funded by the ERC is uh, cited in patents. And this is not patents that are, uh, or patent application, that's not patent application that are, are been done by the researchers in the ERC teams, but we are talking about patents of third parties uh, and uh, I can say that at least 44% of ERC uh, funded projects uh, are cited in patents and in patent application from firms, from big firms. So we can see a lot of signs of the fact that uh, ERC funded research uh, could, can go beyond the results in, uh, in, in, in science, beyond pushing ahead the frontier of science, and it can be uh, used uh, possibly to create further innovations. And uh, some of this, uh, some of you are here today, some of you might need further help to go ahead. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, today we'll uh, get enough information and possibly the possibility to use some of the services offered by my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Laura. Indeed, we are very keen on uh, onboarding this new uh, exciting 400 startups and start uh, helping them in any way we can. Um, the next thing I would like to do uh, okay, my name here, you see, my name is Yorgos Lissandridis and I'm the team leader of the Horizon Results Platform. Um, before I go and uh, give uh, some introduction on what the Horizon Results Platform is all about, I would like to ask my colleague Bella to um, give you a few instructions on how you can interact with us using Slido. Bella? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Dear participants, just so you know, on this QR code, you can uh, scan us through your phones and directly go on Slido in order to submit your questions. We will be looking at them throughout the whole webinar. And towards the end of the webinar, my colleague Yorgos will be taking them over. So if you see interesting questions, please vote. It's very easy. You just have to like it in Slido. And the most uh, voted, let's say, questions will be addressed live. Uh, in addition to this, um, when once you log into Slido through this QR code, you can also see a section called poll. In this section, we have prepared just a few questions if you want, if you can, to share your feedback with us or to tell us, for example, who you are, who, which organization you represent, and if you have a startup, yes or no, this way we can get to know each other better. So uh, the QR code will remain available <clears throat> at the event page. So um, in case you lose it at some point, um, and so, yes, we encourage you to submit questions and be active in Slido in order to keep this session as interactive as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Bella. So if you can please move uh, to the next slide. So what is the Horizon Results Platform? Um, this is a quote from our ex-commissioner. Uh, we consider the Horizon Results Platform a place where our researchers can put their results and uh, where we can help them do something for the society economy. Um, our modest offering to you is that we do whatever is in our power 
to promote your results and to whoever you need, uh, whatever the stakeholder might be. And it will become clear in a minute uh, which stakeholders are the most frequently sought ones. Next slide, please, Bella. So what is the Horizon Results Platform? It's a website. It's the Commission's corporate platform for publishing or advertising is a better word, your key exploitable results. A definition of the key exploitable results uh, will come later. But what the platform is, is just a website where you easily upload your results through your uh, credentials on the funding and tenders portal. And what we do behind the scenes in my team is to try to connect with whatever stakeholders you are looking for to help promote those results. And how do we do that? In order to do that, we created what we call the valorization ecosystem, which will be um, explained further. Next slide, please. So, in addition to Horizon Results Platform, we have uh, uh, created the so-called Horizon Results Platform TV. And the aim of that is, in addition to the visibility offered through the Horizon Results Platform itself, where you can advertise your results, over here, what we try to do is we try to invite experts like, for example, Dr. Iannuzzi, who is uh, who uh, honored us with his uh, presence today that you will hear from later. Experts in, in intellectual property management, business angels and any other expert that can help you promote your results. At the same time, we try to attract researchers that went through this path of becoming entrepreneurs and we try to thus inspire others that want to do the same and uh, today we have the honor of having Vincenzo and Otto that will share their story uh, after my presentation next slide please so what is the key exploitable result I'm giving you a definition there I will not read it out uh, but the idea of a key exploitable result is that it has to be really the most important result. We expect that you know there could be two or three really key exploitable results uh, coming out of each project. Um, and it's really the ones that can make a difference. Uh, we have um, you know a lot of results coming out of a project. But for example, uh, outcomes of conferences and things like that, we don't really consider as falling in the category of key exploitable results. Next slide, please. So what is this uh, HRP valorization ecosystem? It's just a network of actors, really. Um, as you see on the left hand, beneficiaries of uh, the program. So you are the beneficiaries of the program and the demand side, the investors. Um, at the same time, we have project and policy officers involved uh, because it's the project officers that promote, help promote your results through the platform or otherwise. And they also facilitate the feedback to the policy making uh, colleagues uh, through your results. And then Within this ecosystem, we organize a lot of events, be it webinars, uh, bringing experts that uh, uh, explain how you can uh, patent or uh, trademark your, uh, your uh, research findings. Um, and also uh, what we call enablers, and uh, one of which is this Horizon Results Booster, which is a contract uh, that we fund here in the Commission in my unit, uh, where we offer which we offer free services and I will uh, uh, explain a little bit in more detail what that contract does. Also we link with the IP help desk and uh, several investor communities as you will see in the next slides. Next slide please. Uh, concretely 
these are the organizations that we have been collaborating most closely with. So we have the Horizon Results Booster, we have the Solar Impulse Foundation, the Enterprise Europe Network, the European Business Angels Network, and Business Angel Europe Network, and of course the EU IP Help Desk. You get benefits from these organizations through connecting with us, because what we do is we try to align their objectives with your objectives and to bring them in uh, and to offer you the webinars, uh, the training you need to how to pitch to investors, how to protect your IP, even one to one sessions. And we even go the extra mile of brokering directly with an investor for you whenever we can. Next slide, please. Now, I would like to stand a little bit more on the Horizon Results Booster. Horizon Results Booster is a free service for you. It's managed by us, by the team here in, the, in, the, in my unit, in, the, in DGRNI. Um, you're all eg eligible for this service. And in particular, you would most likely be interested in the go-to-market services. So if you go to the next slide, please, Bella. You have three available services offered through this contract. Service one is for portfolio dissemination and exploitation strategy. Service two is helping you draft and work on your business plan development. And service three is a general go-to-market service, and it helps you in all aspects of commercialization. So how to pitch to investors, how to protect IP, how to manage your innovation, et cetera, et cetera. I would really encourage you to visit the website, Horizon Results Booster, EU, which will uh, be posted uh, later on and be shared uh, so that you can find it easily. Next slide, please. Now, one of the key things that we do uh, in the Horizon Results Platform team is we do matchmaking behind the scenes, as we can say. We identify a specific initiative or opportunity for you. This could be an event like the European Climate Change Adaptation Conference or the EU Maritime Days or the EU Industry Days or a pitching event that we organize together with an investor, investor network. What we do is to then go and scout on the Horizon Disaster Platform for potential candidates. We do a targeted communication to you and ask you to apply for that particular opportunity. And I think that Vince, Vincenzo and Otto will uh, be aware of this because that's how we identified their wonderful solution. Next slide, please. And we did have quite a bit of impact through these events. Um, and this is really what gives us pleasure in this work. Uh, when we see the success of these companies that uh, put their results on the platform and trust us with their you know, uh, time, uh, we feel proud that we can bring something to them. Next slide, please. And here are some of the testimonials that we already have on the Horizon Results Platform TV. And on the left-hand side, you will see the Valo, Valo Therapeutics peptide chip solution, uh, the authors of which uh, you will hear from in a minute. And with CT, another wonderful solution that came uh, recently that we had promoted to another pitching event, and they got a lot of success in various ways. Next slide, please. Now, to conclude, it's very easy for you to create a result on the Horizon Results platform. And what I will do here is very quickly, um, you go on the funding and tenders portal, you go to my projects, and you can create a result. I will share uh, my screen for a minute quickly, if I may, Bella. So here is the Horizon Results platform. It's hosted under the Funding and Tennis portal. And in order for me to upload a result of one of my projects, I simply have to log in. I have to put my uh, EUI login and whatever login I use to manage my projects. Then I will come to this screen here where I can see all my projects. Now, in my case, I can see all the projects that 
are in there as a as a administrator but uh, the idea is that i can just select one of these projects that i want to upload the result for so let's just choose one this one for instance i click on the actions button i click on project results these are already published results and if i want to add a new one i just simply click add here I just see a warning about what is the key exploitable result. The definition that I showed you earlier on the on the slide about what is a key exploitable result can be found here. And if you think that your result is indeed a key exploitable result, then go ahead and click OK. If you want more information, you can click on the user guide that uh, gives you a step by step and explains all the questions that we might ask. If you click OK, you will come here and then you will have a form where most of the fields asked are just drop down lists and very easy to fill in. So, this is how you would upload a result. Now, how does the result look like? If I come on the platform, you see the website, here we have several things like uh, links to the partners that we work with, some testimonials, the latest results that came in, some quick searches, specific web pages, sub pages for uh, results contributing to the missions. Here you can do a search all, here you can directly log in to publish your results. If I click search all, We have all the results here and the visitor to the platform. And let's assume that I'm a venture capital analyst and I'm looking for cancer applications in immunotherapy. If I come here, I say, okay, I want to find out results looking for venture capital. Here we have several advanced filters through which the visitor can use to really search very concretely what they look for. One very important aspect uh, field uh, is the stage of maturity of your result. And here one can uh, select the stage of maturity. So let's say that I choose four, which is TRL five or six. Since we have Vince and Otto on the call, let's say that we're looking for cancer and i'm sure that in here we will find peptide chip peptide chip is uh vincenzo's um outcome of his research here his finding which then became a company together with uh otto and you will hear it from them in a minute so here Vincenzo and Otto have laid out a detailed presentation of the result with a nice teaser, um, who is behind the result, a short description, who, what their needs are, what they're looking for, what their contribution to sustainable development goals are, the maturity of the result, current description, scalability, replicability, sustainability of their solution. And then here, they listed some investors uh, relevant information and all these helped us identify their solution and reach out to them for a specific event that we held last year a pitching event that we had that we had with the european business angels network and they successfully joined that event and came and pitched their solution so with that i will end my presentation um and I am exactly on time and I am now glad to hand it over to Vincenzo Cerullo and to Otto Cari, who are going to present their experience with the Horizon Results platform and their journey uh, through the research to innovation. Thank you very much. Over to you, Vincenzo. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you can hear us. I will now 
share the screen. Uh, hopefully you can hear, uh, you can see also the screen, right? Correct? Very, very nice. Thank you. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, uh, let me thank you all for the kind invitation, but most importantly, for uh, having set up such a nice platform where us scientists can, uh, you know, up, up, upload our results, which is already by itself a fantastic exercise to, you know, uh, brain, to pick our brain and force us to start looking at our exploitable results as you have uh, defined it, uh, uh, you know, before. Uh, my name is uh, Vincenzo Cerullo, Vince. Uh, I'm a professor in biological drug development. I'm a head of a drug research program here at the University of Helsinki. And uh, my expertise in, is in personalized and precision cancer immunotherapy. Uh, uh, my lab is almost 10 years old. In these 10 years, we have filed about 30 invention disclosure to our university. We have uh, uh, filed eight patent, well, we have uh, eight patent family already accepted. It counts for more than 150 patents in uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, globe. Uh, we have five licensed technology and one spin off company following exactly the path that uh, you have just uh, uh, described. And some of those biggest challenges I will be hopefully uh, uh, share with you uh, today. So uh, I received an ERC consolidator grant first in 2014-15. Out of this idea, out of this grant, uh, 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 Biotherapeutics was actually funded as spin out, a spin out of this, this grant. Uh, Balo is uh, now in a clinical trial testing in cancer patient the, 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 the results uh, that uh, we have gotten out of this consolidator grant. Uh, importantly for the story of today, uh, uh, out of this consolidator grant, we got our first ERC POC in 2018, PeptiChip. You will hear a little bit more in details uh, the story of PeptiChip by Otto nowadays and uh, what how, what this solution is about and uh, how and why PeptiChip came out of, uh, of our ERC, uh, con my ERC consolidator grant. And we have also another ongoing uh, 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 ERC POC, uh, which hopefully you will hear about it in the future. Now, uh, uh, I believe and I think that uh, uh, one of the most important part of our results, in addition to what Laura said, to you know, a publication that are impactful, but the impact, the long-term impact of science is extremely important it, and, and really sits on my heart. But on the other hand, scientific entrepreneurship is, uh, as I said, is useful, is captivating. Uh, I think it serves science and the rigor of science, uh, but, uh, but I'm not going to lie to you, it hides many challenges. And I want to share some of the challenges briefly, but I still want to do it. Well, first of all, it forces you to think about your idea, how novel it is, but most importantly, what is the impact if your idea is successful, what is the impact on the long term of your, of your idea? Uh, of course, it also forces us scientists to change our, our own mindset, uh, uh, to, to get out a little bit of our comfort zone uh, where we feel, you know, uh, 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 you know we feel comfortable. There are, there, are, there, are, there are experiments that are very well controlled. We know what we are doing. We have been studying for it. We are, we are, being trained for it, but when you go towards entrepreneurship, things are a little bit, uh, you know, out of our con uh, comfort zone, and somehow we should change our mindset and we should be ready to, you know, to, to new challenges. Of course, another challenge is funding. I mean, not every funding actually. There are no scientific or fewer scientific funding that will allow you, you know, the real commercialization of your idea. So you also should start looking in different kind of, uh, of funding that will support the commercialization part or exploitation part, if you want, of your ideas. And again, this is about changing your mindset when you think and when you look about these things. But, uh, but for me, what in, in my little experience that I've had so far, what was the most uh, 
um, I would say the most challenging um, uh, uh, or challenge, sorry for the, uh, so, sorry for, for, for the double words, was uh, uh, finding my role in the company, my role as entrepreneurship and also as academic, uh, uh, while new company or new licensing, new patents were actually moving, were moving forward. So what was my role? What is the scientist's role in a company? And this is somehow always, I found this very challenging for me and this always been very difficult for me to explain. So I, I, I ended up by explaining this by, with this picture. Now, this picture is uh, a picture of my daughter in, on our first date. And of course, as you can imagine, you know, she loves me, I love her and uh, uh, she will never fall in love with anybody else and she will never marry anybody else because she only loves me but of course when i say it the moment i say you guys are all laughing and you're thinking well this is a very stupid way of thinking and i agree with you this is a very stupid way of thinking uh, but i would like to talk to my colleague scientists this is exactly the way we think about our projects uh, we think that our project is our possession. This is, we are the only one that can, you know, we love them obviously because they are our project, our project but uh, we don't want to give it up. We don't want to let it go. And we should realize that the only way to valorize our projects is when they move out from our control and they start to become something that is in a way bigger than us. I don't have an answer to this problem uh, because it's such, you know, a, a thin line. You know, of course, our companies and our licenses and our technology, they need us because probably, hopefully, we are the ones that understand that things better than anybody else. But on the other end, there will be people like Otto, in my case, that they will really uh, 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 dig deep into our technology, they will understand it and they will make sure that this technology will go to the next level. So this was for me the most challenging part and that's you know what uh, I, I wanted to share uh, mainly with you. Uh, uh, try to be present to your technology and to your company or whatever you guys are doing at the moment, but uh, uh, be also ready to let it go because if you're not ready to let your project project go out of your hand, your project will never take off. And that's basically, I've seen it several times, not only with my own project, but also to a project of a lot of people that I tried, uh, they tried to help. Now, back uh, backwards a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of years when I started my ERC consolidator grant, I promised to develop a can personalized cancer vaccine made of an oncolytic viruses decorated with tumor antigens. What I did not realize that this technology worked perfectly smooth in the lab, but uh, to, to translate this into real clinical application, uh, the way the antigens were actually discovered were actually not necessarily feasible, given especially the low amount of tumor that in real life is usually available. And that's how we basically invented a conceived peptide. Oh, I lend it to you. Yeah, thanks, Vince, and good afternoon to all of you. Just to summarize Peptichip, basically what we do is condense the complicated one week long process of antigen identification into one microfluidic chip, which means one hour, very cheap and better results, basically. So we end up with faster and more cost efficient antigen profiling, which is then an attractive investment proposals to investors and as a commercial case. So as Vince was saying, my job was to join him doing the ERC box already to think about the commercial aspects and then try to turn this into a business case. And now what we're doing on the company side is we're actually turning it into a product and we're doing, I mean, good progress on that front. And luckily, we just received uh, European Innovation Council support to help mature Peptichip in the form of this EIC transition grant. So we're really happy that this EU story, EU funded story that been started very successfully now continues. Next slide, please. And then I would just like to point out what George has already mentioned, that we really feel that we've got a big visibility boost, big support 
from the Horizon Results Platform. We submitted the key exploitable results in 2021. And very shortly after, we started receiving invitations to join, for instance, a pitching event with the European Business Angels Network that was really helpful in getting the necessary networks, interest from investors, and so on. So we're very thankful for this help and gladly recommend to all of you to submit your results and you know make use of these uh, support services. So thank you on our part. Thank you on our part for your attention and thanks of course for the uh, uh, Horizon Results platform and all our the support of our research. And Cenzo and Otto, thank you so much. Your uh, presentations was was very inspiring and moving, I would say. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I would like to pass it to our uh, other distinguished guest, uh, doc Dr. Davide Januzzi. Davide. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me, of course. Uh, I'm uh, Davide Yadnussi, I work at the Fly University of Amsterdam. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very difficult to talk after Vincenzo and Otto because they basically punched my, my punchline. Uh, but I will try to say it maybe with different words and uh, with uh, some examples perhaps taken from my experience. I'm, um, I'm the founder of a company called Optics 11 that started with uh, two people uh, back in 2011, hence the name. Uh, on the basis of an invention I made uh, before my first ERC grant. And um, this technology called Fiber Top Technology is basically a platform for uh, optical fiber sensors and uh, that can do all sorts of different things. Uh, I started this company together with a person named Hans Brauer, a serial entrepreneur, uh, a little bit like uh, I can imagine with Chance and Otto. And the two of us brought it uh, uh, through the valley of death uh, on a very small capital that he put in, more like a very tiny seed fund, and, uh, and money from customers using lean startup method and so on. And now the company counts uh, 100 people roughly. It's, it has been split in two companies, Optics 11 and Optics 11 Live, uh, last month for marketing reasons mainly. Um, but, uh, but, you know, the 10 years down the road, uh, it's nice to see that our products are ship all around the world and the company is growing successfully, knock on wood, so far. Uh, I would like to uh, stress what are my main learning points as a, an academic who uh, decided to support uh, the, the startup process. And of course, I would need probably one week to explain all the mistakes I've made, but I will, uh, I will focus on mainly two. The first one, and basically these two have already been touched upon by Vicenzo and Otto. The first one is, um, uh, sorry, and by the way, I've seen these mistakes, uh, this kind of, let's say, obstacles in many startups I have been helping uh, after, after I started my own. And the first one is that as a scientist, we have difficulties in understanding that a product is something that can be completely different with respect to a scientific idea. Uh, the device that I've invented uh, had uh, some features, for instance, it was extremely small. And that was really what allowed me to get the ERC grants, uh, to go to conferences, uh, to write nice papers, because I was the only one in the world who could make it so small. And that is where I would take my pride, my, my moment of, of, uh, of pride, again, with my peers. Um, but that would not sell, because making a device so small uh, would cost a lot of money. And uh, for a sensor, it has to really cost, basically, one euro is already too much if you want to have some hope to conquer the market. Uh, that forces us to make the device much bigger. And it took me a long time to digest this because any lab in the world can make it bigger. And I was the only one in the world who could make it so small. Uh, and that is where the scientist in me was really blocking the, uh, the valorization, the technology transfer process. Once I accepted the idea that we could make it like everyone else could have made it, uh, well, maybe my papers were not as impactful as before in terms of, of publications, but the products started to fly off the shelf. And the way we are thinking is always in terms of our, you know, kind of narcissist uh, professor position in front of, in the podium in front of our colleagues, whereas we should think more in terms of what our customers really want. And by the way, this is a, a very efficient way to to have indeed the impact that Vincenzo was talking about. Uh, because as I always say, actually my device was invented uh, um, because we were having a problem in a quantum physics experiment. 
where probably if I didn't start a company, probably it would have been used by other two or three people who like those kind of things like me in the world. But because we had the company, because we had the business developer, because we had the marketeers, nowadays that device is used all over the world. As I mentioned, there are, there are more than 400 papers that quote the devices that Optics 11 makes. And that is, I'm not saying this to brag, maybe a little, but it's mostly to say that this is really the impact that you would like to see, I hope, for your invention uh, when you look at how they reach the, the market, the actual society. The other important point, which is connected to, to this one, is that in the company, uh, you're not the professor. It's important to understand that the company is, starting a company is really a teamwork, and you need all the team members to play the role. You have to play your own. For instance, in my case, because it was a high-tech uh, device that I invented and with which I made publications, it was very important that I would go to certain tables to put the academic authority on the table. But that was about it. And what the, the researchers have to really uh, embrace is the fact that you do need other people in the team who build the business, uh, the business for you. Um, you are not necessarily in the lead. If it were not for Hans Brauer, my business partner, the company would have been a disaster because I'm not an entrepreneur. He had made that step going from idea to market many times before joining, uh, joining me in this adventure. And he did it very well with me on this uh, technology. Um, and what I've witnessed uh, uh, in a couple of occasions, uh, talking to colleagues who started companies uh, from academia, is that when I talk to them and I say, okay, uh, I, I know you started a company, how does your team look like? And, and I hear often something like, oh, it's me, uh, then there is a young researcher and a couple of PhD students. And then I ask, okay, who's going to make business development over there? Oh, we don't need business development. I'll do it with my, okay, that is a lifestyle business. That is not a startup. Most of the time, 10 years from now, that business, business will be the professor, the young researcher, who will not be young anymore, and a couple of PhD students. Not always, of course, but most of the time it goes like that. Um, and you know, for instance, in my university now, I have, you know, I'm in charge of this uh, of the whole startup uh, landscape of the university. For me, it's forbidden. We forbid researchers to go to market alone without a business person on board. And the stronger the business person, the higher the probability of success. And that was also in another point, which is extremely important, and that I see very often happening actually, and that is informal leadership. Uh, some people are tempted then to take other people in the team, some, some big names, some professors, and again, they pull in uh, other people in the game. For instance, also some PhD students who could do an excellent job, of course, in taking the technology over, but then the leader is still the professor. And when, it, when we talk about the startup, uh, the professor is not the leader again. Uh, and so you have to take that step back a little bit like Vincenzo was saying, and making sure that people who have to take the spotlight will take the spotlight. Uh, because sometimes people will look for you as the inventor of the technology, whereas it might be better that actually either the CEO or the CTO of the company or the CSO uh, will actually go. And, um, and it's not easy to give up, but it's a fundamental importance if you want to succeed. Um, I would like to uh, spend the last couple of minutes in uh, um, in saying a couple of words about the HRP platform. I, there was no HRP platform when I started back in 2006 with the invention in 2011 with a company. And uh, uh, recently I, I was uh, you know, attracted by, by looking into it and uh, looking at what, what is inside. And I would say that uh, it's interesting for the people who are here in, in this audience, mainly for two reasons. One is relatively obvious, and this is what uh, Vincenzo and Otto have stressed, the fact that uh, this is a platform where you can show what, uh, what you're up to, and it is a very effective way uh, to find the network that you will definitely need uh, to make sure that your idea reaches, uh, reaches uh, your target. But there is another aspect that I would like everyone to consider. Everyone in this room, you may like it or not, is, will become, has been a role model for other researchers. Um, we need more and more researchers who will who take this kind of step 
and bring that idea to market via a startup. And what I encourage all of you to do is uh, to give back at some point, because all what you're learning is extremely important for other people who eventually will go through your steps. And actually the HRP platform is a very good um, place where you can look where you can help, where you can give feedback, where you can, where you can uh, give back uh, as, as, a, as a person who has been there, has done that, maybe not successfully, it doesn't matter, but, but you, you went through the process and, uh, and that process is something you might want to share with, uh, with your peers or people who are going through the same, the same adventure. Uh, so with that uh, that sort of pitch, uh, that is a little bit of what I wanted to say, and I thank you for your attention. David, thank you so much for your inspiring thoughts and your uh, very nice intervention. So then, uh, uh, listening to both you and uh, and Vincenzo earlier, it's it's as if uh, the researcher is the father who has to walk uh, his little daughter as a bride to the groom and uh, accept the fact that <laughs> his daughter, his lovely yeah, baby. I, I, would, I would also, yeah, definitely I would add also, perhaps also the mother who has to wait for the- Absolutely, I mean, uh, it, it's a figurative, uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for that. Um, so uh, there are some questions uh, from the audience. So if you could please stay another uh, 13 minutes um if uh, bella you can show us the questions so oh all right so uh, questions for you for you otto and uh, vincenzo i think it's vincenzo who has registered the result do you remember so how long did it take you to upload your result on the horizon results platform i think otto did it it was an easy ah, okay. question uh yeah. I think it took about one day. So the most of the time went into actually collecting the information needed and thinking about what to put in and how to formulate it. Not really in terms of filling in the form. That's just a quicker step in the end. It wasn't the quickest one, obviously, because it has a lot of things you need to fill in. But thinking what to put in was the critical part for us, at least. So it took less than a day in any case. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. That makes sense because you have to start thinking about those questions. There are all the elements necessary to start thinking about uh, when you want to commercialize your result. So but, uh, thank you for that, Otto. It, uh, let me add uh, to, to, to this answer, what a little bit also what David was saying. I mean, Otto, uh, by then he had already joined the team PeptiChip, basically to be in charge when PeptiChip was still a research, uh, a pure research incubated in the lab. And I had a senior postdoc, Sal, that was taking care of the science uh, behind PeptiChip, but Otto was already hired as commercial champion. So he was actually taking care of developing the business out of it, even when this was uh, still somehow a, a, a research project. And that's basically how we also you know, started thinking about the horizon results, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was a very good intuition. Thank you. Thank you, Vincenzo. Uh, the next question is, I think, the same. Uh, how much time investment was necessary with Vincenzo or another researcher in the work stemming from the horizon results platform? I believe that, as Otto mentioned, is not so much filling in the information on the platform, but actually one needs to think seriously when when you have never thought about commercializing your result before obviously this is not something that the uh you you can do very quickly you can answer all these questions quickly so i believe that the platform will stimulate you into thinking of these questions and how important they are when you're addressing your potential stakeholders uh for example, uh, you know, we ask, uh, what is your unique value proposition? What makes your solution so special compared to others? And of course, that's not a straightforward answer because you have to then go out there and see what is out there and compare it and try to sell and find your unique point. And there are many other aspects like, okay, how replicable is your solution? How scalable is it? I mean, these are not easy questions to answer. Obviously, in many cases, 
not in many cases, but these are optional questions because it's we understand that you know these are a little bit more detailed, but you can always create a basic result platform, a basic result profile, as we call it, and then you can come back and enrich it as you go. It, it doesn't have to be perfect from the first moment. You can uh, come back to it, update it, enrich it, etc. So, what is the next question? Uh, how much time? Okay, there was another question about how does matchmaking work in a concrete way? Are interested parties just pointed to the principal investigator, or are there, for example, technology transfer offices involved? Um, matchmaking works simply by us when we identify a particular initi initiative or event like for example we were the ones who organized this pitching event and uh, it, we targeted this event to address the newly decided uh, launched uh, eu missions uh, one of these eu missions was the cancer mission so once we've identified that we then looked in the platform and by searching, like I showed you earlier, through keywords uh, and uh, maturity levels, we uh, found the result that Otto has published. And our possibility is to, to contact uh, the result author, so Otto in this case, and all the actors associated in that result. Um, so we can identify automatically those actors on the funding and tenders portal. Uh, there is an email associated with their profile and we send them directly an email announcing the potential um, event and asking them if they're interested to apply for that particular event to either fill in a form or to reply to us by email or depending on the nature of, uh, of the event. So this is the first trigger of the, of the matchmaking. Now, if, you know, one of you has a wonderful solution puts a result on the platform, and you're really right now looking for an investor, feel free to write to us directly. We have a functional mailbox, and we will try to just, uh, you know, one-off, uh, ad hoc, uh, try to promote your um, your solution vis-a-vis -vis one of our networks that we work with, like the European Business Angels Network or the Business Angels Europe Network. This is a work done for you for free from us. Uh, we just try to you know, make the connection with uh, the right network for you. So this is the behind the scenes matchmaking, but we have also event based matchmaking or initiative based matchmaking, etc. So I hope that answers the question. Um, what roles do you envision for what was that? what roles do you envision for technology transfer units of universities? Um, this is a tricky question for me. Um, our wish is that the technology transfer units of universities are aware of all the innovations potentially coming out of their universities and they're the ones that chase the researchers and try to convince them offer them the assistance that they need and even put them in touch with us and uh, you know uh, uh, raise awareness on the horizon results platform this is what we feel but i don't know whether uh, Davide wants to touch on this because uh, Davide, you are <laughs> very involved and very uh, knowledgeable on this area. Uh, involved, yes, and knowledgeable. I don't know the um, uh, well. It strongly depends on on also which kind of technology transfer unit you have at your own university. There are some who are much much active, uh, so very active, and they want to control the IPRs. Uh, sometimes uh, even, I mean. They, they don't really help in doing that and some which are much more freedom to operate kind of uh, things of course um, i mean you should always my my advice is to always keep them uh, in the loop uh, make sure that they know that you are in contact with uh, other parties externally uh, most of the time what i've seen uh, at least uh, with my experience is that it might be good to involve them a little bit at the later stage, meaning uh, if you have them on the table in the first few meetings, 
uh, it might be perceived as, oh, now we have bureaucracy coming our way, right? So if you first are able to conquer uh, their heart and soul uh, by yourself, by fascinating them with your invention and with a possibility that could come out of that, then you're going to have an easier way to put those two uh, parties uh, negotiating uh, together rather than one against the other. Thank you so much for that, Davide. Um, next question is, how does a researcher find a business person to help? Um, the Horizon Results Platform is one starting point. What we will do, uh, if you tell us that we are looking for a business partner, is try to put you in touch with the Enterprise Europe network uh, of advisors uh, in your region. So um, this is one of the partners that we work with, and uh, they are th their job, their objective is to assist small and medium enterprises and newly set up uh, startups in their regions in many ways, uh, through brokerage events, uh, through uh, direct advice through direct assistant, uh, identifying and uh, guiding uh, how to protect the intellectual property, but also, uh, like you say there, uh, finding a business person for you that could be interesting, interested in your uh, solution. Um, and what is the next question? Uh, that the, the technology transfer units we have answered. Is it possible to have such a space for other EU funded projects? Currently, the uh, Horizon is as platform can host. Older um, funded projects from FP7 Horizon 2020. Horizon Europe, of course, but also European Maritime and Fisheries Fund. Research for coal and steel, and we have recently been onboarding the uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology Knowledge Innovation Communities, so the so-called EIT kicks. Um, so that is the scope thus far. I don't know to which uh, other EU-funded projects you refer to. Uh, we do have in mind to onboard possibly another one or two EC-funded projects that are RNI based. For the time being, uh, the regional funds and the structural funds are not in scope because they have a different way of working. They're managed directly by the member states. So that is a different scope. Maybe in the distant future, we will have one global database for all EU, European Union member state and European Commission funded projects, but that is really beyond the scope uh, right now. Is this program open to startups? Um, this uh, platform, not program, is open to startups indeed. Uh, and it's open to startups that have emanated through um, our EC funded project grants. So if you, like Vincenzo uh, or Davide, have received a grant from the European Research Council or from the European Innovation Council or from uh, Maris Klodowska Curie or from a Pillar 2 uh, thematic uh, fund, you're welcome to publish it here. If you did create a startup coming out of this project, all you have to do is just tick a box saying there is a startup involved. And that way we know that there is a startup that potentially doesn't have the same name as the project, but at least it's a way for us to identify that your work has led to the creation of a startup. And actually, we are the, the whole call is about welcoming and trying to invite the startups uh, that we have just invited. Um, the next uh, statement from Niels again. Uh, I fully agree with you. Um, so that's the unique value proposition uh, that you described there. What added value does your solution provide compared to the current solutions? This is another way of describing the unique value proposition. So uh, 
everyone, I think that I have uh, answered all the questions here. Except how long did uh, one last one? How long time did it took from the registration of each of these two results to its active promotion to investors, partners through the HRP? I think that it really depends on the opportunities that arise. Um, if your solution is there and you're actively updating it when it's uh, when there is something new, so that we have the latest and greatest of what is going on in your project slash startup. Uh, as soon as we have an event or an initiative, uh, we will come to you. It varies. It could be that we we see a result uh, one day and the next day we we email them. If there is something happening at that moment uh, that could interest them, or it could be a few weeks or a month or a, more than a month. It depends really when, if we have the initiative behind so that we match you with that. So, dear colleagues and researchers and startups and entrepreneurs, professors, I was very happy to host you today. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this session um, and that uh, you will come join the Horizon Results platform. Uh, the team here will be happy to help you and try to promote your results in any way we can. And with that, I would like to let you go now enjoy the beautiful weather. For some of us, even a bit too hot. So thank you very much for a very nice event and looking forward to seeing your results coming. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.